I've talked a little bit on this channel that when I started playing video games as a kid, I used to watch my brother play a lot because of my disability, I couldn't play with him. So he does love playing video games, but sadly, as he grew older, he got a job, he got a family and he has school. He doesn't get to play them that often. We both actually try to play games together nowadays and co-op games have been great for that. But even with his limited time to play, there has been one game he has been dying, quote unquote, to play since falling in love with the first game. And it's honestly the one question that he keeps asking me because he knows I work in the industry. And that question is, when is Dying Light 2 coming out? Well, now his wish comes true. The game is finally out. But with my disability, will we be able to play it together? Let's find out. Here is my accessibility review of Dying Light 2. Hi, I'm Steve Saylor, I'm blind, and if you're wondering how I'm able to play video games if I'm blind, if you take a look at the video here, the video is not there, click the link in the description down below to see exactly what I see when I'm playing video games. Also, I wanna encourage you, please hit that subscribe button so you can see more of my videos when they come out. And hey, if you like it at the end of this video, click the like button too. So Dying Light 2 is an open world zombie apocalypse parkour action RPG. Now, I know that's a lot to describe this game, but frankly, it's true because this game is a lot. With Techland touting it'll take 500 hours to see literally everything the game has to offer with main missions, side quests, and multiple branches of entire storylines closed off because of the choices you make as Aiden Caldwell. Even with the 10 or so hours I've played so far, it does feel like every choice matters and how you upgrade your character also matters. I know 10 hours doesn't seem like a lot when it comes to actually reviewing this game as a whole, but trust me when I say this, it's enough to know what accessibility this game has to offer, and honestly, it's not much. The best way to describe how inaccessible this game can be can actually be shown in the hour plus tutorial before you get into the main open world. So let's start with the menus. There's some stuff there, but it's honestly very basic in regards to options. There are subtitle settings, auto aim, auto ledge grab, the ability to change quick time sequences to tap or holds, turn off motion blur, and there's some color mode options but that's about it. Oh, and you can remap controls on a PC for keyboard and mouse, but there is no remapping for a controller other than switching between right-handed or left-handed modes. When you get into the game, you can decide which difficulty options there are, but even at a normal later on, it can feel tough in combat at early levels. Once you get into the game, you are taken through a story tutorial that sets you up for the rest of the game. I won't spoil the story for you because that's been personally the only thing I've really been enjoying about this game, but the first hour or so is the game teaching you the mechanics of parkour and combat while also interacting with the in-game menus for character upgrades, crafting, and your inventory. Sadly, let's start with all in-game menus have really small text. My neck hurt several times trying to be able to read some of the text here by leaning into the screen just to be able to read everything. It's not Witcher 3 bad, but it's pretty close. Then there is the HUD. Some of the waypoints have a bit of a shadow around it to help separate it from the environment, but sometimes it's still hard to see because of how small it is. And also the contrast doesn't really help all the time. You're also introduced to Survivor Sense, which by pushing R3, the game scans the environment around you and will point out items you can either pick up or interact with. It can also highlight enemies nearby or even in other rooms if you're in a building to help you know where danger is uh, whether danger is nearby. It's a handy tool and something I wish most games would have, but if you're playing on console or on a controller, you're gonna be pushing R3 a lot. The items do stay highlighted for a short period of time after you scan, but pretty much expect to use that button quite frequently. Actually, as a side note, the only way I've been able to do it properly for myself is because I have the Xbox Elite 2 controller that has like these paddles on the back that I've remapped to L3 and R3. It's the only way that my thumbs haven't hurt from long play sessions while playing this game. Oh, and before I forget, uh, the subtitle options that I mentioned earlier, these actually are the largest subtitles uh, size in the game. It's not great, but I have seen better. And there is no world dialogue that is ever captioned. So any of the times that you're in like a crowded area and there is a lot of uh, dialogue and a lot of conversations happening around you, yeah, those aren't captions. It's just the main dialogue only. 
this is also brings us to the parkour aspect, which is something that when you get the hang of, it is honestly quite fun. I haven't played any parkour games in the past and the movements are pretty smooth and fun, including even the music will get you pumped up as it picks up anytime you get into a groove of parkouring across rooftops in the open world. In the tutorial section, there isn't a lot to parkour over and it does take some time to get used to. On PC, the controls for parkour are actually great because jump is tied to spacebar by default, which is actually a natural place for that control to be. However, on controller, it's tied to R1 or right bumper, depending on which controller you have, which is a holdover actually from the first Dying Light game. And actually even doing a quick Google search of Dying Light and jumping, there are a lot of complaints about R1 and RB being jump and others pl other players wish you can change it to A or X. I would actually agree. Even with getting used to it because of other games having jump as A or X, I sometimes slip and hit those buttons by accident and sometimes fall to my death. I'm all for wanting to stay true to the series, but this seems like a gameplay choice that could have easily been changed based on the feedback of players from Dying Light 1 for the past several years. Another difficult part of the tutorial that will probably be the most frustrating part is the combat, specifically the parkour combat. Parkour combat allows you to do cool parkour, parkour moves to stagger an enemy with perfect blocks, and then you can vault over them to do kicks or other cool moves later on to uh, other nearby by enemies, making a basically supposed more fluid way to take on groups of enemies instead of just slashing your way through them. When executed well, it does make for a cool, fun moment. However, you can't progress past the tutorial unless you do three perfect parries first, and then you have to pair that also with an additional three perfect parries tied to three vault kicks. This means you have to be able to hit a perfect parry by pressing block or L1 slash LF bumper. Then in the short window of an enemy being staggered, being in the right spot in front, in front of you to be able to hit R1 and RB to vault over them. And then the game goes into a sort of slow motion. So you can aim with your thumbstick to be able to an enemy nearby and then kick them while hitting right trigger before the slow motion ends. All this has to be done in a few seconds otherwise you'd miss it and because of the tutorial you have to keep trying until you do it perfect I had a lot of trouble doing this and it took me a solid 10 to 15 minutes of me trying to complete that section and my hand was basically kind of in a claw the whole time and once you are able to even get past that combat section, not long after that, you're then taken through a stealth mission that has you sneaking past zombies. And oftentimes it's really actually dark to be able to even see them, even with a flashlight. So you're using survivor sense to keep letting you know where enemies are and try not to get too close to them to wake them up. The highlight around the enemies after survivor sense is enabled is nice, but doesn't stay long when you're trying to be slow and stealthy. There are indicators that you that let you know when an enemy is nearby, but it is very subtle and only appears on the sides of the screen, depending on where they are. And when you wake up one of them, most of the time the others will wake up too, and you have to slash your way through them to kill them or run away until they stop chasing you. That also actually brings me to another aspect of the game, and that's also the chase sequences. There are several times in the open world, if you're out at night, you might disturb enough zombies around you, especially if you're accidentally laying on the ground because a missed jump from a roof, and then that starts a chase sequence and the difficulty of those chases are from, are from a factor of level one to four, where level one is just running away from most lower level enemies to a point where you can hide or get far enough above or away from them so they stop chasing you, all the way up to level four, where several of the largest and biggest of the enemies will stalk you and chase you. And if you don't have the skill to take them on, if you get hit by one of them, it's a, a one hit kill and that's it. You can unlock a skill later to eventually be able to take down those bigger enemies, but you have to progress in the game to unlock those helpful skills. And that's another aspect of the game that you have to contend with. The only way to make the game more comfortable to play is you have to progress your character to unlock feature features like a grapple hook or combat moves or e even more parkour moves. It actually makes the game more fun as you play, but it is a struggle to get to that point. Even after 10 hours in, I've only scratched the surface of what skills you can unlock yet, and I have yet to unlock the grapple hook, I've yet to unlock the 
slide so you can be able to slide under uh under like underneath different uh objects so you can be able to kind of like duck and crouch as you're parkouring so even then after 10 hours i still have yet to unlock any of those and once you've done all of that in the tutorial you're then finally taken to the open world and that unlocks the ability to have someone connect with you and you can finally be able to play the game in co-op you just have to get through an hour plus actually it took me about two hours to be able to get through the tutorial just to get to that point but i will say this honestly though on the other side of the coin once i got the parkour down it is actually fun to play the story is what i've been interested in so far now I, because of this is coming out after sev oh, several reviews have come out i've heard the ending is pretty bad but i will have to see for myself the acting is good and i actually really like jonas scott's portrayal of aiden caldwell he's honestly kind of like the best part of the game he did a great job with his performance Honestly, it's kind of the first open world I've played in a while that I would like to actually try other side missions and explore because I like parkouring around the rooftops doing them. It's just sad that the accessibility isn't there to really make this game special for me to keep on going. I still want to be able to keep playing, but I don't know for how long. So with that being said, my conclusion for the game uh, is that uh, actually Technoline developers did come out and say, and like once reviews have been posted, uh, that they do have plans to add more accessibility in the future and would like to have player feedback to let them know what disabled players think. However, I kind of wish they had done that much sooner instead of now we have to wait until a possibility that this might happen. And there's no guarantee whether or not that these accessibility options are going to be able to fix a lot of the issues uh, that myself and other disabled players are going to have while playing this game. So it honestly, like with everything that's there and the, the like, there, or that's not there, unfortunately for the first big release of 2022, I sadly can't recommend Dying Light 2 for accessibility. Uh, I really wanted to like this because of my brother, but unfortunately I just can't recommend it, which also does mean that this is another game I can't play with my brother. So to wax poetic at the end here, while he so while my brother goes and takes on zombie hordes while parkouring over rooftops, I'll be sitting in the bazaar hoping he'd survive the night. Anyway, eh, it's a little thrown in there. Uh, anyway, that's it for me. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. If you like this review, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments down below. If you want to be able to see more of my videos, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be able to be notified when new videos come out, make sure you hit the bell notification icon as well. That's it. I appreciate you. Love you. And have a great one. I'll see you in the next video. As always, I remain obediently yours. Bye.